In tree ID number 15 and 16, we are going to look at some pine trees across Georgia. So the unique thing about any pine trees that we're identifying are needles first and however many needles per bundle or needles per fascicle or some people will even say needles per cluster um, that each pine tree species have. Some might have three per cluster, uh, some might have five, and then there are different lengths. So that's one of the features that we can tell different species of pine apart from one another. Another feature, like you'll see set up on this table, are the pine cones. Um, they'll vary in size and shape as well. And then the third distinguishing feature about differentiating pines is going to be the buds on these pine species. Some of them have distinct buds that really help differentiate some of the closer species together. So without further ado, we will move into tree identification number 15, which is gonna be Eastern White Pine. We've got Loblolly Pine, Longleaf Pine, Slash Pine, and Table Mountain Pine. The first pine tree we are going to discuss is the eastern white pine. So as you can see, um, the eastern white pine, just in the overall look of it, has a pretty smooth stem here. Um, and it's going to have bluish green needles. Now when we get into looking at the needles, I'm going to put them down here on the table so you can see how many needles per bundle or per cluster in each one, but you can see right here, um, this is a very representative sample. The eastern white pine, also known as Pinus strobus, has five needles per fascicle or per bundle, okay? So normally five needles. So you would just check several of these to make sure. Okay, again, they're bluish green in color. Um, when looking at the cone, you can see right here, um, definitely a different looking cone that can be anywhere from four to eight inches in length. Okay, but very um, kind of cylindrical in shape or narrow in comparison to other cones for the eastern white pine. So again, those bluish green needles with that very long cone. Um, and again, when you're looking at this, if you were looking at the tree as a whole, then you would see that branches occur kind of in whirls around the tree trunk. Not a very largely economic tree as far as uh, forest harvesting goes in the state of Georgia because of the way it branches and whatnot. All right, up next we have the Loblolly Pine. Um, very common tree in Georgia. Pinus Tata is the scientific name, as you can see. Um, lay it down here on the table, let's take a look. And on the Loblolly Pine, you can see we have three needles per fascicle. And again, they're going to be six to nine inches in length. And they're going to be a very dark green in color. When looking at the cones, they're often found flat on the twigs, um, but they're roughly four to five inches long kind of a medium sized cone when looking at some of the differences between the larger ones and the smaller ones. Um, but again, often flat on the twigs and four to five inches long. Um, when you're looking at the Loblolly as a whole, it's gonna have that deep ridged bark on it. Um, so you can kind of really tell that when you're looking at a standing tree, trying to compare it to maybe a, a short leaf pine or something else but it's going to have those deep furrows or ridges in the bark 
that will help you differentiate between that. It's also very shade tolerant um, and will have lots of limbs on the tree typically. So thirdly, we'll look at the longleaf pine. Longleaf pine, it's all in the name here, typically has three needles per fascicle. Scientific name, Pinus palustris on the longleaf, but those needles are going to be roughly 10 to 18 inches in length, okay? And they'll, the needles themselves, as you can see on this limb right here, tend to be crowded at the end of the twig, okay? So it'll give those long, kind of spilling over needle look on the whole tree, okay? And then, looking at this limb, another very distinct feature um, for longleaf, if you're getting it confused with maybe slash pine, which also has a pretty long needle, but you'll have that white fuzzy large bud, probably the largest bud on the pines we're going to see. But that white fuzzy bud gives longleaf away every time. Okay. When looking at the cones, just like the needles, you've got a very large cone. Um, this cone can be anywhere from 6 to 10 inches in length when mature. And it's pretty easy to tell apart from most of the others. Some interesting facts about the longleaf. Um, this used to be a very dominant pine species in the late 1800s, early 1900s, but due to overharvesting and poor management, we saw a rapid decline in the number of longleaves that we see now. Um, again, it used to be very dominant, but it was, it was widely known to be a good timber tree um, and certainly got a little over harvested and poor management practices, uh, a lot of fire suppression, whereas the longleaf pine thrives under fire. Um, in the 19, early 1900s, they didn't realize that at the time. So they had a lot of fire suppression methods that really helped eliminate this because in the first couple of years of its life, it's very susceptible to brown spot needle blight and the use of fire helps cure that. Also in the first two, three years of its life, a, a very unique feature for the longleaf is that it is um, in the monocot form or the grass stage. So it'll look basically like a tuft of needles sticking up out of the ground um, almost like a tuft of grass uh, and fire really helps kind of eliminate the overcrowding and any competition uh, provides nutrients after the litter is burned up and things like that so longleaf has those unique features about it that kind of differentiate it um, but not as dominant as it once was in the southeast so longleaf pine Pinus palustris. Up next, we will look at this species. And this is the slash pine. The slash pine is going to have two to three needles per fascicle. A lot of people say that the S pines are ones that have those two to three needles per fascicle and that's kind of the way you can remember it if you see that um, when looking. But you can see that example of two there. This one's looking like it mostly has three on it, but you will occasionally find um, two needles per bundle on the slash pine. The needles are going to be roughly 8 to 12 inches in length, as you can see here. And they are going to be a pretty dark green. When looking at the pine cone, as we see there, um, one thing you may notice from the back, um, in size, this one shows it really well. 
um, is it's going to have that glossy brown cone. So it looks like you sprayed some lacquer on this, but in essence, that was not what was done here. That's just the way it is. Okay. Um, the slash pine also, when looking at the buds, has this copper colored bud. So you can see that copper colored bud that really helps differentiate it. You might start to get this confused with maybe loblolly or longleaf, but you see that copper colored bud. Um, you look at those glossy cones. All those are good clues in differentiating the slash pine. Now, the scientific name for slash pine is, I pronounce it Pinus eliota. Um, so others pronounce it Pinus eliota Eli, or eliotia. Um, but it's just easier for me to remember if I pronounce it like that and also how to spell it. The slash pine is used pretty heavily uh, for timber production and turpentine. Mo a lot of turpentine use from the slash pine um, grows very well in South Georgia where it likes sandy soils uh, and it also has a rapid growth rate because of that. So this is the large timber or the large planting in South Georgia um, where it's conducive to those conditions. <clears throat> Lastly, we have the Table Mountain Pine. The Table Mountain Pine um, is very distinguishing in comparison to these others. It's similar to some, but when you first look at it, it's going to have a very stiff needles. Okay, when talking about how many needles per fascicle, um, you're going to see two. You'll notice they are twisted, um, but again, the big difference, this is very similar to Virginia pine, but the big difference here is the length of the needles and how stiff and dark gl glossy green these needles are. They're also thicker than the Virginia pine, um, but again, stout and twisted. When you look at the cone of Table Mountain pine, you can see this one. Um, had started to open, but that's what it looks like when it's closed. It's going to have those stout curved claws on them. You can see this one on the limb itself has really nasty looking curved claws. Okay. Scientific name for Table Mountain Pine is Pinus pungens. And again, just remember those stiff needles on the Table Mountain Pine um, that help differentiate it. Thick needles um, and that cone with the curved claws on it. So let's review these five trees that we have seen. First, we had these smooth glossy bluish green needles with the smooth bark, the cone that was more elongated than a lot of the other cones, okay? Eastern white pine, Pinus strobus. Second, we looked at a very common pine tree in Georgia for planting and just native wise. Um, three needles per fascicle on this with needles that are roughly four to eight inches in length, okay? Um, pretty basic cone, average size. This is Loblolly Pine, Pinus Tata. Then we looked at the longest needle pine you will see in Georgia, anywhere from 10 to 18 inches in length going to have that white fuzzy bud as you can see there okay those long needles large cone okay longleaf pine pinus palustris fourth we saw this pine tree a little bit shorter needles than the longleaf um, remember those dark green needles with that copper colored bud there as you can see 
needles a little again a little shorter but that glossy cone and that was slash pine pinus eliadia and fifth we saw this pine with very stiff needles okay thick dark green needles are twisted looks like you took your finger and just took the tips and twisted them with that cone that has those stiff um, curved claws on them the table mountain pine pinus pungens so that makes up the five trees in this video